you know, I did Manhunter. I had done Manhunter. And uh, I had, you know, I, on the strength of... Actually, what was interesting is that uh, a wonderful casting director called Bonnie Timmerman came to see me in Rat in the Skull. And when I... And she called me into her office to go on tape for Michael Mann. And she said to me, she said, would you mind if you turned your back to the camera? I, I said, what? She said, I, I don't want to see you. Would you mind? I said, well, this is a funny film interview where you don't want to see me. I said, well, okay, so we did this reading. And I said, well, why do you want me to do that? She said, well, you know, where I was sitting, she said, I, I sat in a seat, this was at the Public Theatre in New York, she said, I couldn't see you for 20 minutes, but I could hear you. And it was pretty scary what I could hear. So I, I really want, and actually there's a bit of it, I use a bit in the actual film, because I actually, my first... Unlike Tony Hopkins, there, I'm, my first thing is I'm completely turned away from the camera. That's the same atrocious aftershave you wore in court three years ago. Yeah, I keep getting it for Christmas. <sighs> Did you get my car? I got it, thank you. And how is Officer Stewart? The one I was first to see my basement. Stewart's fine. Emotional problems out here. Do you have any problems, Will? Of course you do. I did that film, and uh, and then I came back, and there was nothing. I mean, and there was my marriage was over. I had no work and nothing, and you know, and I was I didn't know what I was going to be doing. My theatre career, I, it sort of sort of evaporated, and I didn't know. And I thought, oh God. And then I knew that I, I mean, I was on the point of moving to America at that point. I was on the point of trying to pursue a film career here, and I realized I couldn't because I couldn't leave my kids, I couldn't leave my home. So I went into the Barbican. Manhunter, which made you a trick quiz question, who was the first actor to play Hannibal Lecter, yeah. which um, it seems an odd experience because it's, it's a very, very good film. Everyone who's seen it thinks that, and yet there is the shadow of all these ones. Yeah. What, what, how difficult was that psychologically when not, Hopkins started playing it? Not difficult at all. I, it never, ever affected me. I don't, I don't have those kind of feelings, you know. I don't feel proprietorial about things. I mean, you know, I... I, I mean, when I, he was standing there with his Oscar, you must have thought, well, that could yeah, have been me. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you know. I, you know, I had an incident years and years ago. It's funny, it goes right back to Michael Gambon. This, this is a true story. This is in 1960s... Seven, sixty-eight, and we were sharing this dressing room. Michael had had an argument with another actor, and he and he said, "Can I come into your dressing because we're not getting on?" I said, "Sure." So he put his name in my thing, and I was all set to do a, a TV series, and I had, you know, I just got married, and uh, and I was thinking, "Oh, this would be great." And it was a series called The Borderers. It was about a Scottish. It was the sort of western of the Scottish borders, the, the marches and the kind of the Douglases and these feuding families. And it was a really good show. It was a very good script. And it was being produced by a man called Peter Graham Scott. And um, so I remember I was, doing, I was doing Romeo and Juliet and I was doing Othello. And so all these people were coming up to see me. Peter Graham Scott, and th there was uh, Simon Langton was there, and James Gatwood was there. And Simon Langton tells the story from the other end. So after the show, they were all going to come round to my dressing room. So at the end of the show, there's a knock on the door, and it's these people, and the door opens. And there was a tiny dressing room, and the door opens in such a way that I can't be seen. Only Gambon can be seen. So the producers say to Gambon, we thought that was fantastic. We're doing a show called The Borderers, and we feel you'd be absolutely right for the leading role of Gavin Kerr. And Gambon was literally polaxed by this. I mean, he was, I remember his makeup dripping down. And, of course, I was pretty polaxed, too, sitting behind, the, sitting behind the, the door, hidden away. And I thought, I can't believe this. It was like, and everything went in kind of slow-mo. And actually, Simon Lanker told me years later that he had no idea this was going to happen. The other people were polarized, and that Peter Graham Scott just took it upon his, as, a, as a whim to say, I want you to play the part. And then this was embarrassing. Not only was it embarrassing, because I had actually managed to get Gamble with my agent, my then agent, and said, I think you really should take Michael Gamble on, because he's a wonderful actor, and you should really take him on. And he did. And I, and I remember Mike, you know, he was, and I, I sort of justified. I said, oh, Mike's, 
know, he's got a young kid. He's got, a, you know, he's, he needs a break. And, and I kind of let it go. And once I let that go, nothing else affected me after that. You know, I, I just, somehow or other, I, that kind of, I, I kind of exercised something during that time, you know, and I never felt that kind of jealousy again. So you've never at any point imagined if you'd done all three and won the Oscar? Well, you know, I, it would be, be nice to win an Oscar. I, I wouldn't necessarily want to win an Oscar for Hannibal Lecter, quite honestly. Um, I mean, I, I've, I have very strong views about what happened to Hannibal Lecter, uh, how Tom Horace kind of fell in love with his character. Some, I mean, Silence of the Lambs and, and um, uh, Red, Red Dragon, Dragon the are both really, really good, movies, good stories. I mean, they're wonderful books. I think Hannibal is a bit risible and a bit ridiculous. And I think that Hannibal lost his mystery. In Manhunter and in Red Dragon, Hannibal Lecter is very mysterious. You don't really know. So, there's a, so it's a wonderful role to play because it's, it's kind of, he's a, there's a strong, mysterious element to him. By the silence of the lambs, he's a little less serious, but he's still pretty mysterious. You use every hour skin cream. And sometimes you wear a lead at all. But not today. Tony did this extraordinary performance, which everybody, you know, went for. Um, but the interesting thing is subsequently, of course, people have become aware of the other film. You know, and people say, oh, you know, there was a film before that. And, of course, it's now become this great thing, you know, that's, that sort of plagued both our careers. I mean, I remember I was in Vancouver doing uh, the X-Men films, and uh, I got a call. It was a Thursday morning saying, I just wanted to ring you up with somebody. I don't know who it was. It was an actor friend of mine from New York. Oh, yeah, it was a friend of mine, Michael Davidson. He rang me up from New York saying, I just read your reviews for Hannibal Lecter. They're fantastic. Congratulations. And I went, oh, thank you. And I thought, hang on. I said, what reviews? I haven't, I don't do, I don't do, I haven't done Hannibal Lecter for, you know, then it was, you know, well, it was, it was nearly 15 years. I said, I hadn't played. What he said, no, 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 you've been reviewed in, for, in Hannibal, but they've spent, the, 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 the New York Times has spent the whole time re-reviewing you and Michael Mann and giving you raves and poor Tony not coming off so well. And, it, of course, so I went, oh, well, so, so I've, I'm very grateful to, <laughs> you know. But I, it, it's, you know, there's a sort of, those roles, uh, you know, I don't know how Tony feels about it because I haven't spoken to him about it, you know, so I don't know. But I'm very happy. I'm very happy with the way things turned out.